The Robin Hood-like figure who robs the wealthy and donates to the poor has always attracted people. It is the staff of tales when a bandit helps common people by accomplishing feats that the normal person can only imagine and by giving their lives in service to a higher good. Although this kind of hero is typically a literary construct, there have been instances of real people defying authority and becoming heroes as a result. These criminals, whether via thievery, insurrection, or just avoiding the law, have captured the hearts of the populace. We produced a list of the 10 most inspiring individuals who, despite being most known for committing crimes, have been hailed as heroes. Number 10. New information implicates a new suspect in the D.B. Cooper mystery in 1971. A man going by the name Dan Cooper commandeered an aircraft and detonated what he claimed to be a homemade bomb. He was a robber, not a terrorist. Cooper might have been the most intriguing burglar ever. He demanded four parachutes and $200,000 in cash. His requests were fulfilled when the plane touched down in Seattle. He requested that the crew fly him to Mexico City at a low altitude after letting the others off. Cooper, however, leapt out of the aircraft while flying over the Lewis River in Oregon, carrying a bag full of cash and his parachute. He vanished without a trace. A portion of the money was discovered in 1980, around 40 miles 64 kilometers downstream from his alleged landing location. D.B. Cooper's life story has become legendary. Many assume he was murdered for the money, but others think Cooper managed to find a tropical island and is still enjoying margaritas on the sand today. Number 9. Interview with Hungary's whiskey robber, Attila Ambris Attila Ambris, a young man, rode beneath a freight train in 1988 to enter Hungary illegally from Romania. Ambris was wanted by Romanian authorities for a series of misdemeanor offenses that he committed when he was a little boy. Ambris petitioned for citizenship and political asylum after arriving in Hungary. He started performing a variety of jobs in Hungary to support himself, from grave digging to being a professional hockey player. Ambrose carried out 29 robberies at banks, post offices, and travel companies between 1993 and 1999. Despite not giving the homeless his stolen money, the Hungarian populace applauded his deeds and labeled him the Hungarian Robin Hood. He had a certain charisma, and because he never killed anyone and was always quite courteous to the tellers and postal workers, he also acquired the moniker, the Gentleman Bandit. He was detained in 1999 but managed to flee soon after. He was eventually apprehended and is still incarcerated in the Satoral Jaujali Maximum Security Facility. Number 8. Hunt, Ralph, Bucky, Phillips pursuit a decade later on September 7, 2006, Bucky became one of the very few people to ever be listed simultaneously on the top 15 and 10 most wanted fugitives lists of the FBI and the U.S. Marshals Service. The next day, he was apprehended. Phillips was known for conducting small-time felonies. In April 2006, Phillips fled from the Erie County Jail where he was being detained for a parole infraction. From April 6 through September 8, he escaped capture. Phillips became a folk hero during the protracted manhunt. T-shirts with Bucky, slogans like, Where's Bucky? and Run Bucky, Run, started to be sold locally. A nearby restaurant even offered a Bucky burger in a to-go box for customers who were on the run. It is assumed that he was offered shelter by friends and family in the area due to his clear local connections. He shot three police officers twice in the summer of 2006, when the hunt for Phillips was at its height. The officers lost one of them. Ralph, Bucky, Phillips entered a guilty as hell plea to a number of crimes, including aggravated murder, on November 29, 2006. In the Upstate Correctional Facility in Malone, New York, he is presently serving two life terms consecutively. Number 7. The true story of the outlaw folk hero, John Dillinger in the 1930s, John Dillinger was viewed as a contemporary Robin Hood. Although John was involved in crime throughout his youth and early adulthood, he didn't rob a bank for the first time until he was 30 years old. Because the Dillinger gang had better ideas for generating income during the Depression, honest work did not pay an honest wage. Due to the hardships of the Great Depression, Dillinger turned to robbing banks. He was apprehended during a 1933 theft. He pulled off a daring escape, which earned him hero status. A little bit went a long way during the Depression, so the Dillinger gang did distribute some of their illegally obtained funds to the general population. And that was sufficient to prevent witnesses from speaking with the police. 
John's reputation as the world's number one enemy made the gang legendary. Newsreels about the Dillinger gang began to play in movie theaters thanks to the Department of Investigation, DOI, later the FBI. The public applauded the bank robbers and booed the DOI special agents, much to their surprise. John Dillinger was shot and executed by the DOI in front of the Chicago Biograph Theater just over a year after his first significant bank heist. The public was moved by his demise at the hands of a callous government organization. He is regarded by many as a man who, for a time, defied authority and got away with it. Number 6. Regarding the ballad of Gregorio Cortez, Edward James Olmos Cortez, who was born on June 22, 1875, in Tamaulipas, Mexico, rose to fame as a folk hero in the Rio Grande border towns. Sheriff W.T. Morris died as a result of an altercation in which Cortez was involved in June of 1901. After the incident, Cortez fled, leading law enforcement on the largest manhunt in American history, up to that moment. He was apprehended in late June and charged with killing two sheriffs. He was found guilty of a number of offenses, including the theft of the horse that led to the conflict with Morris. Because of his propensity for dodging the law and his passionate testimony in court, the residents of the Rio Grande border region transformed him into a legend. The song, Corrido de Gregorio Cortez, and the movie The Ballad of Gregorio Cortez, starring Edward James Olmos, helped to promote his legend. For stealing a horse, Gregorio received a 50-year sentence. The Texas governor Oscar Colquitt did, however, grant him a pardon in 1913. But Cortez passed away on February 28, 1916, for an unspecified reason. His cause of death is still up for question today. Gregorio is regarded as a straightforward individual struggling to survive who successfully revolted against the persecution and oppression of both the American and Mexican governments. Number 5. Bill Miner's Weird Tale of the Coolest Bandit Ever Ezra Allen Miner, who was born in Kentucky probably in 1847, became known as the Gentleman Robber for his extraordinary decency when robbing stagecoaches. He is credited with coining the expression, hands up, but he was repeatedly apprehended and imprisoned. He received a 25-year prison term in 1881, after serving 21 of those years, he was released in 1902. Seeing as how stagecoaches were now all but vanished, Miner then started robbing railways. According to the Billy Miner mythology, he ordered his men to never kill a robbery victim, even if they had to defend themselves. It is even alleged that at one instance he paid off a widow's mortgage with ill-gotten riches before stealing the money back from the heartless, impersonal bank. He resided in the Canadian city of Kamloops for 18 months using the fictitious identity George Edwards. He was well liked by the locals and never had a criminal record. Authorities didn't give up looking for Minor, though. He was finally apprehended and given a life term in the British Columbia prison. He repeatedly managed to escape but was always apprehended. Shortly after his final escape and apprehending, he passed away. Number 4. Everyone is shocked by Frank Abagnale's tales of being a con artist on The Carson Tonight Show. Abagnale, who served as the model for the movie Catch Me If You Can, was a well-known con artist by the time he was 21. At the age of 16, he began writing false checks, and by the time he was 21, he had written almost $2 million worth. He was apprehended in 1971. In exchange for assisting the FBI in apprehending further con artists, he was freed early after serving only two of his 12-year sentence. He persisted in being a con artist nevertheless, operating side schemes for cash while pretending to be a pilot. Nearly as effortlessly as most people breathe, he stole, lied, and cheated. Although it was in his nature to do so, the police were onto him, and he was frequently apprehended. Abagnale finally made the decision to start again and spent more than 30 years working for the FBI as one of the top authorities on document fraud, check fraud, forgery, and embezzlement. He currently owns and runs a fraud consultancy business that has worked with over 14,000 institutions and businesses. He is revered as a hero by a great number of Americans. Number 3. Speaking at the University of Oregon was Georgia Durante One of the most fascinating lives in recent American history was that of Georgia Durante. At age 12, she began modeling, and by the time she was 17, she was a Kodak girl. She had undergone more by the time she was 20 than the majority of people ever will. She had survived being raped, taking part in a gang war, and being in a violent marriage. 
she became a getaway driver for the mob after her second marriage. After giving birth to her daughter, she escaped New York for Los Angeles, where she rose to fame as one of the nation's most prominent commercial stunt drivers. Since then, she founded her own stunt business, which has contributed to more than 100 motion pictures. She has authored an autobiography titled The Company She Keeps and speaks publicly on domestic abuse across the nation. Many women who have become stronger from the common experiences of abuse view Durante as a hero. Number 2. Baltimore Politics, Violence, and More, Kwesi Mafume Kwesi Mafume is currently a member of the U.S. House of Representatives after holding the positions of President and CEO of the NAACP, Councilman for Baltimore, and member of the Baltimore City Council. Mafume had some run-ins with the law during his formative years, but he was never a career criminal like the other individuals on our esteemed list. After his mother passed away, it's believed that Mafume joined gangs in Baltimore. He released his book, No Free Ride, in 1996. He admits that he has been, locked up, on several occasions due to theft suspicions. Kwesi Mafume is now viewed as a hero by many young, disadvantaged youngsters in Baltimore. Number 1. Junior Johnson is the last American hero. Robert Glenn Johnson Jr. was a bootlegger's son who was born in 1931 and raised in the family business. Johnson, a legendary figure in the NASCAR world, provided a clear link between the sport's early days and the contemporary phenomenon of stock car racing. Johnson's unlawful behavior caused him to spend almost a third of his life in prison. Reagan pardoned him in 1986 while he was serving his sentence. Johnson, however, was a pioneer in the automobile and created a productive, drafting, strategy that enabled him to win the Daytona 500 in 1960. He resigned from racing in 1966 with 50 grand national victories, making him the most successful driver who had never claimed a championship. Johnson's most notable literary accomplishment outside of NASCAR was becoming the subject of Tom Wolfe's seminal 1965 essay, The Last American Hero is Junior Johnson. Yes, Johnson passed away in 2019 at the age of 88. Hundreds of NASCAR fans revere him.